Hey, welcome back. So I did a little update on my solar system here in the shop. So I added two more panels now. So I got that center section of the array done. So now I got to get uh, a couple more pieces of Unistrut and then order some more panels and start the uh, second row. And we'll go in and take a look at the uh, power in there I got so I got uh, the center on one solar charger and then I got uh, this single there it's the one that came with the starter kit since it's an odd size got it over there for right now so we'll take a look in the shop I guess I'll go turn the light okay taking a look at the system here uh, I think I'll show you what I did here on the outside too. Right now everything's just kind of temporary. I got the wires laying on the ground. But I bought a few of these half inch fittings to run the wire in. Another thing I did a little different was uh, on that original set I had 20 foot hot and power coming in and then I got a plugs right here and then it goes to Got another 20 foot of cable going into the charge controller. So I thought, well, why well, don't I look and see if I can just find 40 foot of you know, 10 gauge cable that'll plug in up there by the panels and run all the way into the, into the charge controllers, which I found some there a little cheaper. And I figured one less connection is even better. The only drawback was both cables were black. So what I did every you know, a couple feet, two, three feet or so, I put a piece of red tape so I'd know, okay, that's the hot wire. And then I got them coming in the wall right there for now. I figured since these are 40 amp charge controllers, you can see right now the we're bringing in a little solar. I put 40 amp breakers in there. Of course, I just, even with the four panels on that one, I don't think I've seen it over 2025, so I could probably actually go with the 30 amp. I brought my uh, DC load out, got it coming over here, the wires that go out to the 12 volt light in the other room. And then my tray cables that I got, they were both black again, so I put red tape on the positive one going down. So, like I say, these two here is solar coming in, they're both hot from the breakers. And we've got battery cables here, battery here. You can see our meter saying 100% there. And what I did on the inverter, I kind of you know, I've got my jumper here. This is a two gauge going from hot to hot. So I got the inverter on the hot on this battery, and then the ground is over here, or negatives on the negative on the opposite battery. And then I did that with one of the inverters coming in. I think it's this one. I got Got the hot coming in here, negative coming in over here. And then when I set the second array up, her charge controller, I put negative or positive here and negative over there. Just kind of flip flopped them across. That way the two batteries work as one. Instead of feeding into one battery, then it has to trickle to the other one. I'm just wiring them both up as one. Uh, one thing I'm looking at. I had a subscriber ask about what do I do for ground. <laughs> I'm thinking this part of the system may not necessarily need an earth ground. You know, it's 12 volt. You don't really have an earth ground in a in a vehicle. But if I wanted to add an earth ground, I could probably come from right here, and cause I got you know three more spots there, and I can run an earth ground. But uh, and then I'm looking at a combiner box out there on the solar array. It has a spot for an earth ground. And then for here on the inverter, 
As you can see you have a, a ground, a neutral, and then the light, the line. So I could come right here off the ground, here come out and split it, and run down to a ground rod. And that would uh, ground the AC part of this. And I think that's really probably the combiner box out there because it has a, a lightning arrestor on it and then you can run an earth ground and then run an earth ground here on the AC part I think that would really cover it but you know just to be safe a guy could put one there too now another thing I need to do is put my uh, bus bars down here and probably I'd probably put the bus bars low because I'll probably take a couple more of these breakers and put them between the bus bar and the inverter so as not to back feed too much you know juice backwards into it should that be a pro issue and I still got my little 12 volt charger hooked battery charger hooked up there for charging my row batteries but uh, that's not what I got right now it's getting late in the evening and Solar rays not really pointing the sun at the sun. I could turn it, but it's pretty charged up anyway. So you see that one's bringing in two amps, and this one about 0.8 amps. So and then like here, I got the DC load out, so I got the uh, that's what that light is. So I got room for a couple more over this way, and two or three more over that way if I if and when I need it. And like I say, I'm talking. I'm, really seriously thinking about moving these shelves out of here that way I have this whole ledge of course I don't think I'm going to fill that whole ledge with batteries but <laughs> over the next five years you never know right now I kinda got my plan set up through about May next year as far as buying components for this setup and I'm really planning on oh, about four batteries for this first array and three to four charge controllers so roughly one battery per charge controller I was kind of thinking one battery per three panels and I still may go with that that way if I got four charge controllers I can have five batteries and uh, I'll eventually cut get the stuff laid out better and then I'll cut the tray cables to length to shorter length and uh, kind of map it out on the wall a little bit better but uh, I've come a little ways so just getting that piece of plywood up there helped a lot and then of course this wire draping over here that's that's the input from the 50 watt panel that's uh, coming over to this little bitty charge controller here and down to this little 500 watt inverter and 35 amp hour Harbor Freight battery, solar battery. But I got my little charger down here so I keep my char batteries charged up. So, the one thing I have noticed is with these trees out here in the yard, and this is August right now, and uh, the sun doesn't hit this solar array because of these trees here. These trees are in the east, so it might be about 8.30 or so before the sun hits these, right, these panels. But right over here where I got this junk by the fence line, it hits there maybe up to 45 minutes, an hour earlier. So I'm kind of thinking about digging that out. Of course, this ground's awful hard through here, so I may have to use my rotary hammer and dig a little trench. Of course, that rotary hammer will go down about a foot. So if I can run some conduit down through there, I might put a little array over there. Now, I don't know, I might just go four panels just to catch that early sun. Or I might put up, you know, another 12 panel array that uh, try to at least get four panels for the time being. I don't know if I want to do that before I finish this up or I may go ahead and try to run the uh, conduit over there this winter. And I was thinking just a pole. I got I pick up those satellite dishes all the time. It has the uh, the bracket on the back, you know, where you can set it and everything, and sets your angle. So I'm thinking about just taking one of those, getting some Unistrut on there, and 
making a, you know just a, a single array like this that'll hold four panels on that uh, and something like that you know I think that would hold that four panels just fine I don't think it's you know, gonna be too much weight and like I say I can put three or four of them over there if necessary if I can dig down into this because pretty a lot of sandstone right through here so that's gonna be the question if can I dig to I guess if I had to I could get something 55 gallon barrel and fill it full of rocks and cement get a bunch of this old uh, some big old chunks of cement and dump down in there put the pole in there and try to get it centered up and dump a bunch of them in there I had to hold it down anyway that's uh, about where my solar system is right now and end of this month early next month I may I don't know if I want to buy two more panels right away and add on to this the as winter's coming on the days are going to be shorter so not going to have as much time to generate power I got 200 amp hours of storage but what I'm kind of thinking of is buying that uh, Renogy 300 watt pure sine wave inverter and put it on here for, for that way I have good backup power because I got a little backup battery power on my computer and modem but it does not like this uh, modified sine wave so that's why I was thinking get that pure sine wave inverter on there and then I can uh, run emergency power into the house when necessary so yeah it is what it is anyway so I may go with it and then following month get a couple more panels and that you know and get that you get that charge controller filled out and then maybe get the third one third charge controller and then maybe another battery get if I get that filled out then I'll have eight actually nine once I get the other charge controller I'll have that single one on the third charge controller by itself like I have have it set up now it's the nice thing about having that extra panel is I don't have a charge controller sitting there doing nothing for a month while I'm wait, you know waiting to get the funds to buy the next two panels and now when I get that energy I don't know if it comes with cables or not so I may have to just disconnect using that one for a little while until I buy a couple cables but eventually if I get you know strung out here with 10 batteries then uh, what I might do is buy a couple number one gauge cables about five foot long that way I can wherever I'm at at one end I can just run the short one down there and have the five footer to go to the far end of the other so that way it'll kind of travel through the batteries not just drain one one or two drain one down to nothing and uh, anyway, I guess I'll get off of here, and uh, you guys can kind of see how I've kind of set it up so far. And uh, I had one person asking about those uh, bus bars that I got at Lowe's. And like I said, they have white covers on them. They're aluminum. You got four holes plus a big one. And uh, I painted one red, one black. They're not on the website because they said they were looking on the website and couldn't find anything. I said, yeah, they so they show some bus bars on there, but they don't show these. And then when I was down there in the store, that's when I saw these, and I thought these are better than what they're showing online. So, uh, I think next time I do a video on this, I'll try to get one of these covers off. We can see the bus bar without the cover, and uh, but that that hold that 10 gauge wire just fine. And I could actually run three to four charge controllers in there. I kind of thought about running a, a ground off of one of these down into the, you know, for an earth ground. But, yeah, we'll see. But, of course, I could run, run them as a power box, too, instead of that one there. But that, that one I just put, something I tore apart and got that one out of. And I thought, well, that'll work for what I'm doing there, because... If I wanted to, there's four four holes in each one, four screws. So 
I could run three more leads out of there if I wanted. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna get off here. I'm rattling, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. I know some of you guys are got little solar systems set up, and some are trying to put one together. And I'm kind of doing mine on a budget, kind of just starting small and and growing it. It I had to do a, some hunting and research to find out that I could hook you know two charge controllers together. Of course, usually the way they they've got it, they got a you know, like I said, they got the bus bars and they got the you know hot coming to one bus bar and then the ground to another bus bar and then it's coming from the bus bar with a thicker cable going down to the battery, which I haven't got the thicker cable yet. So I bought that two gauge. I wasn't really sure how big the two gauge was in that, so I bought the two gauge and then some four gauge. But uh, this four gauge is probably that way you see on riding mowers, maybe a little bit bigger. But uh, I think the two gauge will work really good for these. Now the 35 amp hour Harbor Freight batteries, the four gauge would probably work great. And these had 3 8 holes in them where the two gauge had 5 16 holes. So I'll kind of go with the two gauge to connect battery to battery to battery and then then the one gauge coming out to the inverter and uh, we'll build it one battery one charge controller and one solar panel at a time just get a little bigger each month and uh, like I say here in Oklahoma and storms and stuff you know never hurts to have backup power and to help to make this thing pay for itself I try to run all my power tools and what I can off of it, you know, off of this. Charge my Ryobi batteries and whatnot. Try to get you know some free electric while I can. <coughs> so I got an emergency backup plus I got power. Now I got to kind of watch it too. If I know a storm's coming in, I don't want to use up too much power that day because I'm going to know I'm going to probably need it that night. And living in Oklahoma, it pays to have camping gear, whether you camp or not, because lights go out, basically you're camping. So, anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. See so you guys take care, and uh, you guys stay safe, and stay, stay cool. For those of you guys that are in the States, uh, down there in Australia, you guys stay warm. And we'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.